Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews, <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. You don't have to repeat that one. <laughs> Glory, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Hebrews, Shebrews. Just brew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 26. Hebrews 10, 26. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. For if we sin willfully... Everyone say willfully. willfully. What's the, it says, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. In other words, you're not covered. We're not covered. If you sin willfully, you choose to sin, there's no more covering. Does everybody get it? That's what he's saying. You are not covered. That means the enemy's going to come as quick as he can and try and kill you. He'll do everything he can to get to you. If you sin willfully, you know the truth, and you choose to reject it, you say, I'm going to do mine will instead of God's will. I'm going to do this no matter what. There is no more covering. There no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Does everybody see that? Verse 27. But a certain fearful expectation of what? Judgment. Judgment. Judgment and a fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who's rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he is, was sanctified, a common thing. And what? Insulted the spirit of grace. Insulting the spirit of grace. In other words, insulting the plan of God. For we know him who said, vengeance is mine and I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge whose people? His people. So if we choose willfully, now, if you run a red light, by mistake. Is it very possible if a police officer's at the corner, you're going to get a ticket? Yes. Amen. Well, you say, well, he might have mercy upon you. Yes, he might. He might, like, give you something different. Majority, sometimes they might not give you the running the stop sign or running a red light, but he might give you no seatbelt. But there's always a cost. There's a price. Amen? It's the same thing in the spirit. Even though we may do it ignorantly, what covers me and you is the blood of Christ. Only when you repent for it. So you must activate the blood of Christ by repenting for that sin that you did willfully. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to sin every other day. I think I'll do this and then repent because if your intent is to constantly do it and try to put it under blood, it ain't going under the blood because the word repent means to turn away from it. So when you choose to turn away from it, God can forgive you. But if you repent and choose not to turn away from it, he can't forgive you. Does everybody get that? Hallelujah. He said, it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you, you were enlightened, you were saved, you realized, you endured great struggle with what? Sufferings. Partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were, were so treated. In other words, after you become a believer, especially people you used to hang around with, oh, you a Jesus freak now? Oh, you've gone religion? They don't even understand. what you know, They're the ones that are religious. We're free. We stepped out of the realm of bondage and religiosity and stepped in the realm of relationship and freedom. 
So you will be persecuted after you get saved. People will wonder, why aren't you doing the same things? Why do you want to live a different life? Because you're not looking at this life. You're looking at the one after. Because that's more important than this present one. So, for you had compassion on me in my chains, in verse 34, and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not what? Cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of what? Endurance. Everyone say endurance. endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Wow. But we are not of those who what? Draw back to perdition, but those who believe to the saving of the soul. So there's a battle here. It's called willful sin, amen, versus the power of endurance. Does everybody get it? There's willful sin that versus, it's a battle that versus the power of endurance. You and I need to have the power to endure. Does everybody get this? In Hebrews chapter 12. <clears throat> the power of endurance. Too many people wimpy out, quit, no endurance. That's why he says, be careful not to cast off these things. Don't get discouraged. It doesn't mean offense and discouraged will come. It's what you do with it. Amen? you got to battle through that. you got to shug it, sh throw it right off, sh shug it, uh, shake it off. I don't care what you do. Get rid of it because behind it is the demonic force that's going to try to cause you to do things you shouldn't. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a, so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking on to who? Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons and daughters. He says, my children, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked, counseled, correctioned. For whom the Lord loves, he what? He chastens and scourges every child whom he receives. If you endure chastening you know many people don't many people say man i hate correction you should love correction because correction brings protection everybody get it correction brings protection well i don't want to be corrected i don't want to be instructed well then you will walk away from the protection of the lord if you endure chastening God deals with you as sons and daughters, for which child is there whom a father does not chasten? Let me share with you about this, because there is a power of endurance that you and I must maintain. And we've said some of these things before, but I want to repeat some of these things to bring, rem to bring to remembrance here. One of the things that you and I walk in is God has set boundaries for me and you. These boundaries are many times to be reset and refreshed. They're to be what? Reset and refresh. These boundaries are what keeps you in. These boundaries are established by the Holy Spirit. He gives you the power to endure because the enemy tries to draw you over the boundaries. Fear is one of them. Anxiousness. Anything 
works of the flesh. He tried lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. He's always trying to draw us to these boundaries. It's almost he's trying to get a hold of, he can't come across that boundary, but if he can get you close enough to it, pow, he can try and grab a hold of you. So this chastening, this correction, this counsel correction and direction is what refreshes and resets the boundaries so that we can walk in them and be clear of the influence of evil and be pleasing to God in whatever we do. You cannot fulfill the mission God has sent you on if you're not in the boundaries. It's impossible. If you do it, Endure chastening, God deals with you as sons or children. For what child is there whom the father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not his sons and daughters. Everyone will be chastened. You'll be counseled, correction, direction. You will re receive instruction from the Lord, and you will get a rebuke. It's a spanking. He says, you know, many times, you know better. You'll hear, you know better. And, and what happens is, listen, God just doesn't do that. What happens is because we, what you sow, you what? Reap. That brings chastening. God uses those things to bring, work things to the good. But the enemy tries to use them to work things to the bad. So the quicker you repent the quicker God can move on your behalf because everything must be under the blood. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Verse 9. Furthermore, let's speak it, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be subjection to the father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us and seem best to them. But he for our profit that we may be partakers of his what? Holiness. Being a partaker of his holiness, it doesn't mean you get a little halo over your head. You know what I'm saying? This is not about anything. It's a partaker of his character. Character. Because holiness is a representation of purity. It is the character of God. You can't dress holy and you can't act holy. You live holy. Does everybody get it? You live holy. You live a life of righteousness, which is established as holiness. Verse 11. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but what? Painful. Painful. So what's he saying? Don't run and endure. Nevertheless, after it yields the peaceable fruit of what? Righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang low and the feeble knees and make straight the paths for your feet so that what is lame may, be, may not be dislocated but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, unless any root of what? Bitterness springing up causes trouble, and by this many become what? Defiled, lest, they be any, lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Again, this is important to recognize in how we have been empowered to endure already. God has already empowered me and you to endure. You choose to walk in the power of endurance. That is our choice. In Philippians 4. See, you can, you can choose to reject the power and go on your own power. Glory. Philippians chapter 4. Did you ever... Nah, it's just, every one of us has fallen into a place where you, you know you got to do something, but you don't want to.
you know, like sometimes you, you need to go to, he had to come to total freedom, but you didn't want to. <laughs> you knew you needed to, but you didn't want to really. <laughs> or you needed to go to a class to learn something you didn't really want to. Amen. Or you were told to do with this teaching, but you really didn't want to. But after you endured, you said, yes, okay, I'll do it. Because his way is bigger than my way. And he knows better for me. And he sees the end sometimes when we don't. And you do it. You endure. You choose to accept the power to endure. And the end result was cool. I like this. Man, why did I, why did I fight so hard to say no? And then you realize, wow. Why? Because the fruit of it produced righteousness. But that's in everything that we do. Look at the enemy is always going to bring resistance to me and you. That's just the way it is. You're under this realm of influence of the demonic forces. Even though we are walking in the boundaries, there still will be influence. Amen? Of course, the closer you get to those boundaries, the more influence you will be. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, Finally, my brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is any praiseworthy, meditate, think on these things, focus on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again, though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Now that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be what? Content. You know, to be content takes endurance. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who, who strengthens me. I can do all things. This is the conclusion for me and you. First of all, Christ is a representation of the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. Everywhere you see power in the Word of God, it's always associated with the anointing. The Holy Spirit carries the anointing. That is the conclusion that the anointing of Christ empowers me and you to endure all things by maintaining focus on Christ Jesus. Amen? Colossians 1. Colossians 1. Colossians 1. In verse 9. Is everybody okay? Amen. Let's speak it. For in him dwells all the fullness of the God. Hallelujah. Verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Now, again, in this, you and I are partakers of the inheritance that he has for me and you. We are partakers of this eternal inheritance for all He says, be strengthened, be strengthened with all the might, with spiritual understanding. Look, it, it takes endurance to get understanding. Everything that you and I are doing in the kingdom it takes endurance. Without endurance, we fall. We get misled. 
We get hurt. We get offended. We agree with something we shouldn't. Amen. He says that we may walk worthy. Amen. Walk worthy of the power so that you... The only way you can walk worthy is to walk in the power of endurance. In Psalm 68. Psalm 68. In verse 32. 32 to 35. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Oh, sing praises to the Lord, to him who rides on the heavens of, the, of heavens, which were of old. Indeed, he sends out his voice, a mighty voice, ascribe strength to God. His excellence is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. Oh, God, you are more awesome than your holy places. The God of Israel is he who gives strength and power to his people. Are you his people? Amen then he's given you strength and power. So do we have an excuse? No. Praise and blessed be to God. He has given us strength and power by his spirit. Acts 1. Acts chapter 1. <clears throat> Verse 8. Everybody there? And you shall receive what? Power. power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So where's your power come from? The Holy Spirit. And then you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Why? Because you cannot be a witness without the power of God. You cannot endure without the power of God. But there's an area where you must agree with all the time because you have a free will. You can reject or agree with, accept. Every one of us has a free will. And everything you do and everything you're doing, that's why he says, acknowledge me in all of your ways. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Empower me. I need your strength. I need your wisdom. I need your understanding. Show me what I'm to do. Did you ever notice that when you do things, sometimes you get really drained? Because we walk... We drift from the power of the Holy Spirit to the power of self. Amen? Because the Word says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So all of a sudden, it's like that second fresh breath of air comes. Whew, yes. And you're able to continue on. We shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Acts chapter 10. The power is to endure. Amen. Amen. The power is to what? Endure. endure. In verse 37. That word you know which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed... Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power to do what? Dance? He might have danced on the devil's head. <laughs> to endure. And you had to endure. Look at it. What does it say? He says he was uh, brought into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to battle. Well, the whole, Let me tell you, when the Holy Spirit's with you, you're going to endure. But it's acknowledging him, yielding to him, not to your way, to his way. It says that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing what? Good. Does doing good take endurance? Yeah, or else you do evil. And healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was what? Was with him. The Holy Spirit is your power. He is your source to the power of God. Proverbs 18. Verse 
Proverbs 18, 21. Is anybody there yet? Including me. Let's speak it, please. What's it say? What does it say? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Now listen, so if there's power in the tongue, we want that power to be transformed from the power of self to the power of God. And it becomes the power of God when you speak the words of God, which is going to assist you in endurance. So you have the power to endure. You have the power to choose. So you're going to speak the word of God that sets the path. So it's going to become a unified union with you and the Holy Spirit and the word because his voice is powerful. So it no longer becomes your voice. It becomes his voice. Now you're able to endure. See, people are thinking, well, I need to. See, when you focus on you, nothing happens. When you focus on him, everything happens. It may not happen the way you want it to, but it's going to happen. Hallelujah. So if there's life and death in the power of the tongue, and go to Hebrews 4. So we want to exchange our voice for his voice. Hebrews 4. Power of endurance. In verse uh, 12. Is everybody there? For the word of God is what? Living. It's living and what? Powerful. When what? Spoken. Yeah. And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit. And the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom we must give account. So the voice of God penetrates through all physical. See, when you and I are in this realm, we're actually taking eternal words, eternal presence, eternal voice of God Almighty because you're filled with the Spirit and now you are speaking and now it's unifying, it's agreeing with the eternal realm. So it's actually passing from the spirit realm through the physical realm back to the spirit realm again. Does everybody understand this? This is what allows me and you to have, so it's actually we call it, the, it's the power of God. It's not the power of me and you. It's the power of the presence of God in us. It is the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty that comes forth through me and you. And it's just reconnecting again. That's all we are is the vessel of connection in everything that happens. Second Peter 1. Chapter 1. Is everybody there? In verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? The knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. And his divine power has given to us all things. Everyone say it. His divine power has given to us all things to do what? Endure. Does everybody get it? To endure. That pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. So I want you to grab hold of this that the divine nature is maintained, upkept, and protected by the divine power of God. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. Lust will nullify. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, 
to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For these things are yours and abound. You will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. And of course, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Very powerful. So we see that the divine power is to endure. In other words, so that your, the word says resist the devil and he will flee from you. But it says first to submit to God. You must even endure to submit to God. That is a free will. You choose to submit to God so you have the divine power to resist the devil so that you can endure. That's why people who do not pray and do not make contact every morning cannot walk in the divine power of God. They walk in their own power. Some people say a few Hail Marys and book. Maybe a few father, our fathers or whatever and try to get on with their day. It ain't going to work. Just don't work. You must make connection every morning. You must battle. It's your responsibility to push back the powers of darkness so you can walk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, that is, it must come out of your mouth. See, people can pray for you, but that can only last so long. What is everlasting is what comes out of your mouth. Because what you sow is what you reap. And what you speak is what you eat. And what you eat is what you become. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1. So we want to maintain that divine power to endure which all of a sudden releases the divine nature of God in me and you. Romans 1. Power of endurance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 1.18, please. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are what? Without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened professing to be wise they became fools and char and changed the glory of the incorruptible god into an image made like corruptible men and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things therefore god also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of god for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever and ever and ever. You know, there's so much false religion and false doctrine. I was in a place yesterday, and I was sharing my testimony with someone. Of course, the one was like, yeah, this is, that's powerful. And the other one was trying to, he was new aged, trying to tell me the cycles of all kinds of goofy stuff. He was numberized, but he was delusional. The only thing I can share with him was, this is what it is. What you choose to do with it is you. But one day you'll stand before the one that made you. Everyone will stand before the one that made you because he's the only one that can change you. You can go to New Age and all kinds of religions and false doctrines, but you ain't going to change. People try to change themselves. You and I cannot change ourselves. We've tried and failed. It becomes very frustrating. I mean, it really does. I mean, we all want to be perfect in a certain way. But the heart, when the heart is right with God, it wants to please him. Dad knows we're frail and bonehead sometimes. He knows we're going to make mistakes. But if the relationship with, with, is with him truly in a love 
relationship. There's an area, you know, sorry, Lord, sorry, Lord, about what I just did. I should have done. Okay. Let's get it right. Let's not do it again. Let's not repeat it. That's how he looks at it. He's not about to bury you alive. Amen? Amen. That's what the enemy wants to do. <laughs> so the power of God. Oh, glory. Let's go. Um, so the, hallelujah. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter one, power of God to salvation for endurance. We need a power to endure. Second Timothy one, In verse six. Everybody there? Therefore, do not. Therefore, I remind you to what? Stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but what? power and love and sound mind so see even the, the power to endure maintains the love of god and a sound mind you're maintaining inside the boundaries those protective boundaries that god gives us why because they get reset and refreshed first peter one First Peter chapter one. Verse three. Power of endurance. Let's speak it. Blessed be the Father, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, received in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and fullness of glory, and receive the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So you and I are kept by the power of God that produces faith of it produces faith in his promises. Remember, by maintaining those promises, it says once you've endured and done the work, you've done the will of God, the promises release. So we are always expecting the promises to be released. But one of the enemies wants to do is, <laughs> doesn't, he wants to resist you from maintaining it. He wants to resist you from enduring so that he comes and, and he wants you to live a life of deception and discouragement. But God wants you to live a life of victory, faith, knowing your calling and the end of who you truly are. Remember, one of the things the enemy does is steal our identity. You must endure that. You must endure the arena, maintain your identity. And that identity is maintained in the boundaries that God has set forth for me and you. So they must always be reset and refreshed. And that's why it's important to always ask the Holy Spirit to empower you. Because if you don't submit to God, you can't resist the devil. You can't endure then. And listen, we are in a season right now where we must endure. There's all kinds of influence going on. It is a time right now where you and I must endure. Kingdom must be priority. 1 John chapter 2. Verse 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. 
Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might not be, that they might be what? Manifested. So did they endure? No. That none of them were of us. But you have it, I what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Now let me share with you again. You submit to the anointing. We are servants to the anointing. The anointing is not a service to us. We are servants to the anointing. See, when people think that the anointing serves you, they're looking at their own power. You serve the anointing. Amen. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. So when you're serving and you're submitting to the anointing of Christ, the Holy Spirit... He's going to tell you things. He's going to empower you to see things through. He's going to empower you to hear things. He's going to give you the power to endure all temptations and anything that's going to come across your path of discouragement. Hey, things happen in this world. You never know when you get blindsided. Amen? But even being blindsided doesn't mean that you fall out of the boundaries. When you're blindsided, the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes. If you will yield to him, he will keep you in. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to count it all joy. And you're going to be joyful. Thank you, Lord. You'll maintain an attitude of gratitude. Thank you so much. I could have made another choice and gone the wrong way. Thank you. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. Verse 21. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the anointed one? He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever what? Denies the Son does not have the Father either. And he who acknowledges the Son has also the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you. Let what abide in you? The anointing which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. Wow. How many of y'all know voices want to deceive you? Yeah. But the anointing which you have heard from him ab abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie and just as it has taught you you will abide in him and I'm going to close at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 you know Friday night anointing service when the anointing came one of the things the Lord said is I'm anointing my children to endure. I'm, gonna, I'm anointing my children to endure. Why? Because he knows things are coming. Amen? So I would like to today to anoint anyone that wants to endure. I think that there should be an anointing for endurance. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18. Is everybody there? For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through the wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign. Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, that the Jews a stumbling block 
and the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brother, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Hallelujah. Powerful. God has already given me and you the power to endure. Many people think that the message of the cross. See, the message of the cross is so vitally important, not only to understand. It's not about just Jesus dying on the cross because he actually died in the garden before he got on the cross. That's where death was. It was the anointing that brought death to himself so that he could fulfill the, the mission of God. That's what happened to him. And by exchanging on the cross, that released the anointing for all mankind, anyone wanting to receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit so that they could endure and carry the message of truth to all mankind. Again, we are in the last days. Sometimes I wonder if we're in the last minutes. At any moment, I really believe that that seven-year peace treaty can be signed. Because that's what they're really pushing for right now, big time. And once that peace treaty is signed, I, re I believe we have three and a half years left, or maybe sooner. But we are in a time of plenty also. Remember, we are in a year of jubilee. God is trying to get all kinds of things to his children. But if they don't endure, the enemy comes and steals. So we must endure, and you cannot endure in your own strength. Only through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed that's been empowered in us grow and bear fruit for your glory. And keep us, Lord. Keep us in the boundaries. Help us to continually reset and refresh these boundaries as we yield, willfully yield to the power of of the Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.